so for this illustration, I'm going to have a uh, gradation as well. Uh, I think I'm still going to sample from this little color patch on layer four. So what I can do to transfer that over is to um, either go to edit and then copy or hit control C on the keyboard and then to get it back on here you just hit control V either that or go to edit paste and both will do the same thing. I wanted to sample this blue color from it and also this darker blue that's in the background which is pretty cool. This will be slightly different on how I select these to put in the gradation because um, certain faces are going to get the gradation and others aren't or they'll get a different gradation. So what I want to do is get another layer, put it behind the inking layer. Um, so for this I'm going to use the magic wand selection tool and I'm going to hold on to shift as I do this because shift allows you to add individual bits uh, to add the gradation. I need to toggle the highlight outside so that I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, and if you select something you didn't particularly think would need to be selected, then um, you can hit control, hold down control while you click it and that will deselect whatever you're doing. Uh, this also functions with the undo and redo button, so it, it won't just like deselect anything from it. It will um, undo or redo whatever areas that you selected, which is pretty handy. Okay, so once I do that, I'm going to put in the gradation. I think that since uh, I need to establish where the light is coming from. I'm going to make this a pretty light gradation, say that the light is kind of hitting it from the top left and casting light onto all of these faces that I've selected. So uh, since the top is closer to the light source, it will be lighter and brighter. And so that's pretty pretty nice color. So once I'm done with that, I will deselect and create a new layer to continue on with this. Did I just do that onto layer two? My bad. Okay, here's where the undo tool comes in handy. All right, so that's selected. Undo. So basically what that did was it took away the gradient uh, while still leaving everything selected. So now I can go to the layer that I actually want the color on and then redo it again. So that looks good. Now I can deselect. I should be right. That is on this layer now, layer 7, not on my ink layer. Good. These don't need to be on different layers, but... Uh, say if I needed to change the gradation on just one side, uh, I can use the protect alpha function for the layer uh, to change just what that gradation was. So now I think this will be the light color and then I will make darker color about like that. So now I'll start selecting things uh, by holding down shift. So this will be the second most light hitting it. So now that that's selected, I can put in the gradient again. I'm going bottom to top. And that gradation is a little bit more subtle. So again, uh, you don't necessarily have to mess around with the selection. Again, you can just change the uh, the mode of the layer to protect alpha. 
in that way it will only overwrite the color that you put down on that specific layer. So I'm going to make that a little bit darker and then I'll do the gradation again. Now I'm going to repeat this I think about two more times getting progressively darker. And so that created a pretty cool effect, in my opinion. So now I'm going to take off the, um, the line tool and see how that looks. Not great. So maybe I'll just lower the opacity of the lines so they're there to offer like a little bit of separation, but not too much because I think it can stand on its own pretty decently. So I think I'm going to add a glow to this as well. Duplicate the bottom layer since I, uh, I don't know if you saw, but I uh, used the technique where I selected everything and then did an inverse. So this, this bottom layer is basically over the entire bottom of everything. So I'll duplicate that. I think I'm going to need to change the colors on it. So you can do that from the hue menu. I need to turn the brightness way up so that I can glow. Also turn the saturation way up because I want it to be a blue glow. Okay, so what does that look like exactly? It's not, not bad. It's, it looks like it could be a frosty glow. So I'll set that beneath there, uh, go back to filter, use Gaussian blur. So I want it to be a little bit more frosty blue. Uh, so I, I changed my color tool to that frosty blue. I will put the blending mode to protect alpha. Uh, and then I'll use a brush tool to make it easy. Uh, and just turn the size way up. And then I, I drew over that, and that changed the color pretty good. Let's see what Dodge does. Dodge does some pretty cool things. That's weird. Hmm. I'm going to duplicate that layer again, put one on top and one on bottom, and the bottom one will be way stronger. I think that looks really stinking cool, if you ask me. <laughs> then again, I'm biased. <laughs> so that looks like eyes. I think to just elevate this drawing a little bit more. I will um, make a circular gradation on the background. Uh, so to do that, you do the uh, gradation tool. Uh, you change the shape to circular instead of linear. Uh, You just drag from the center of the circle outward, and that will add a gentle circular gradation to it. Hmm. Went a little bit too far. So, undo button comes really in handy. Well, that's pretty cool.